Hey everyone, Brian here with DIY Outdoor Life. Today we're going to be talking about using lithium batteries on a camper. This is a huge topic, but it's important that we at least understand the basics because this is the future. This is where we're heading and we're getting closer every day. Now many of you who watch the channel know that I've been building and servicing these batteries since the technology was available to the public, but I don't use one as a fixed battery on my camper. There's a reason for that. I believe this topic is a lot more nuanced and use case dependent than a lot of people are giving it credit for. So we're going to talk about both sides of the issue today. Uh, it's a lot, so I'll try to go quick. Let's get into it. For starters, build quality matters. Using a battery on an RV is actually an extreme use case. Whether you realize it or not, your camper is undergoing earthquake-like forces as you drive down the road. The wind speeds are in excess of what a hurricane is. It rains, it snows, there's temperature differentials, there's condensation. This is a tough life to be a camper. Now when we look at a battery, these lithium batteries are constructed by a number of raw cells. They're going to be packed together with what's called a battery management system, a BMS. You can think of this like a computerized switch that helps the battery run properly and it will also turn off features before the battery does something that's bad for it or even potentially damaging. This is a far more sophisticated system than a lead acid battery. We need to make sure that the battery we're getting is built to handle an RV scenario. Now recently, other brands have caught up with and even surpassed Battleborn on quality, but there's a reason why this is considered the gold standard for RVs. It's a sealed marine grade battery. It can handle getting a little wet. The entire battery has a high-end UL rating made in America. It's not just a UL rating on the cells like you see with other brands. This box is a thick nylon vibration absorbing container. It's designed to eat up those forces before they're transferred to the working components of the battery. If you cut one of these open, you see the highest quality components, thick conductors, mechanically crimped ends. They put sealant over top of the circuitry and the boards in case condensation gets in the box. This is not what you're finding across the board, but they're not the only one that's doing this. I like the new Smart Lithium from Renogy. I love some of the stuff coming out from Kilovolt. Lion Energy has always made a good battery. I'm not telling you to buy one brand or the, or the other. What I'm telling you is that all of them are about seven, eight, or nine dollars an amp hour. A hundred amp hour battery after shipping and tax is gonna come close to a thousand dollars. Some of these four or five hundred dollar batteries totally sketch me out. <laughs> If you're looking for a discount brand, SOK mops the floor with the competition. They give you about 95% of the build quality for 70% of the cost. But this is not what you're finding across the board. Pay attention if you do your research to the BMS. A Battleborn BMS is designed to last as long as the cells. Some of these companies are advertising the cycle life of their cells and they slap a BMS in there that's not going to last half as long as the cell capability. They're planning on that being years down the road, they've already cashed your check. So not all of these batteries are created equally and when you're talking about using it on an RV, it really matters. So the next thing that we'll talk about is the Achilles heel of lithium chemistry batteries. The individual cells will become permanently damaged if you try to charge them below the temperature that water freezes. They also become damaged if you try to use them down around zero degrees Fahrenheit. So the reputable brands are including temperature sensors that connect to the BMS and switch off those features before you can damage the battery. This is the sort of stuff that we really need on an RV battery. Even if you live in Florida or Texas, you're talking about a battery that could last decades. So this is not a chance that you really want to take. Where the build quality and these temperature sensors are infused 
is the companies that are skimping out on the temperature sensors are skimping out across the board. So when you find a reputable, well-built battery, chances are it's going to have some high-end temperature controls. The cheap ones are missing them all together. But the middle-of-the-road batteries are what drive me crazy even more. They include a temperature sensor so they can advertise it on the box, but they do not work consistently. There's whole YouTube channels that are great, hundreds of thousands of subscribers, where people cut open new batteries and test out these features. The failures are the norm. The successes are the exception. And they're testing those batteries when they're brand new. If they put it in a paint shaker like a camper for a bit, the performance would go down even more. So it's important as we start to separate the RV batteries from the cabin batteries. Because there's some low cost, high build quality batteries without temperature sensors. We can compensate for that in an off-grid cabin with high quality charge controllers. But since your camper gets charged by your tow vehicle, solar, and shore power, it is far more difficult to do that. So we have to start with a battery that has reliable temperature sensors. And once again, these are the batteries that still cost a lot of money. Ah, we're going to get to the good stuff here in a second. But I just want to say, once you have the quality battery with the good temperature sensors, there's a lot we can do to get good performance here. You can insulate the battery box. You can add a seed germinating pad or an RV tank heater to heat this battery. You can move it inside your RV if you can wire it up that way. They are making heated lithium batteries, but I'm still not really sold on the technology. I like to have control of those components and to be able to swap them out instead of having them built into the battery. But the technology is getting better every day. Okay, now we can talk about the exciting stuff. There's a lot of advantages here, so I'm going to try to move through this quickly. This is a more energy dense chemistry. It means it takes up less space and weighs less for the same capacity. That's going to be an advantage. It has 100% working capacity. It means you can use this whole battery without damaging it. The days of monitoring our voltage and trying to stay on the top, top side of a cycle are going to be a thing of the past when we convert over to lithium. The caveats to this situation is the bottom 10% has a really steep voltage drop. Most people are going to experience 90 amp hours on their RV when they're using one of these batteries. 90 is better than 50, but it's still worth noting that that last 10% is questionable for some people. The other thing that we have to discuss is you can't store these batteries at a complete depth of discharge. They need to be stored with some state of charge. Depending on the level of the low voltage cutoff, if you drain this battery and store it that way, you could damage it in as soon as a week, depending on the circuitry that they're using inside this battery. That means all of the people that say, hey, I'm not going to use my cutoff switch or remove the terminals when I'm in storage anymore because I have a lithium battery. That's wrong. If the parasitic draw on your camper sucks this energy down in storage, you can ruin the battery. So you still have to exercise best practices. The next exciting feature is that this battery charges faster. How much faster? Well, that depends on the charging gear that you have. If you're simply doing a drop-in replacement and you're using the charging gear that came with your camper and tow vehicle, and maybe you have a 100 watt solar suitcase, you're not gonna notice the significant changes that are being advertised. This battery has the capability of using huge solar arrays, of upgrading your charge controller, adding a high amperage uh, DC to DC charge controller on your tow vehicle. So this battery has that capability, but it doesn't charge itself. So we gotta get that gear. The next thing that people really like is that this battery doesn't sag under high discharge rates. That sounds more complicated than it is. What that means is for an RV, if you're using a whole house inverter, the device that makes your outlets work when you're off-grid camping, and you're plugging in things like microwaves or electric tea kettles, this battery will maintain its strength as long as the capacity is supported. You can't do those things forever, but it's highly capable to do those things for short periods of time. 
With lead acid batteries, they brown out when you try to do that. So you have to compensate by going with a lot more lead acid batteries. That's why this is a no brainer for people who have those high wattage needs in their RV. I will say we've been using lead acid for decades. It doesn't do that if you're talking about your water pump, your lights, your furnace, your refrigerator. This is really something that separates them on the high end of performance. Now, the most exciting part about this battery is its life expectancy, but this needs to be broken down like everything else. I hope some people have the patience to make it through a longer video like this. So I just wanna talk about the facts. We take an individual cell in a climate controlled environment and we discharge it and charge it very quickly like a drag race. We record the amount of times we can do that before the cell loses performance. That's cycle life. Now, if you have a good BMS, your whole battery is gonna be capable of that. But again, we have to replicate those scenarios. That's why this so cleanly translates into our DIY solar projects, our cabins that are off-grid, home energy backup, because that's a very similar scenario. That's not what's going on on an RV. So the experts tell us 10 to 15 years, maybe 10 to 20 years is how long these last on an RV. For that, they're looking at the fit, the frequency, intensity, time, they'll add a T type of abuse that the battery is environmentally being subjected to. So in that case, the battery dies not from cycle length, something shakes loose, you get water infiltration, something shorts out. That's how these batteries die on campers. 10 to 20 years is incredible. I don't see why we have to continue to exaggerate this. We have the normative data on deep cycle lead acids. AGMs last three to five years. This includes everyone. This includes the people that are beginners and abuse those batteries. They run them to the lights dim and the smoke detector goes off. When you zero in on the folks that are exercising best practices, staying above 12.2 volts as much as you can, using a battery tender during storage. These people are getting five, six, or seven years. When you put the reality goggles on here, you have a battery that costs three to four times as much and lasts three to five times as long. That's an amazing value. We don't have to exaggerate it any more than it actually is. In a previous video, you heard me talk about DC to DC charge controllers. You do need some form of interface between your camper and your tow vehicle if you're running one of these batteries. I'll include links in the description so we don't have to do a deep dive today. Every reputable manufacturer of this battery tells you this. They, the two chemistries need to be separated, either through a simple isolator or a high quality DC to DC charge controller. Battleborn recommends the Victron Orion. It's multi-stage. It's gonna prevent this battery from backfeeding into the tow vehicle when it, tow when it tops off. That's a serious concern. It also monitors the temperature of your alternator. It doesn't have to do with the acute draw. It's the prolonged draw when you're going on long road trips that will smoke an alternator when you're trying to use it to charge one of these batteries. Okay, everyone, let's wrap this video up with an analogy that I think summarizes all of these points. You will hear people say that the lithium battery is the automobile and the lead acid battery is the horse and buggy. This is a really good analogy for a bunch of different levels, although you'll commonly hear it in some form of like battery shaming or some, if you knew what I knew, you definitely, you know, we've all been there. I like the analogy because it illustrates the jump in technology, but at the same time, there was a transition period in history. At first, most people were better off with the horse and buggy. It was cheaper. You might have not had access to roads, mechanics, or gas stations. You just feed the horse hay and it keeps getting you from point A to point B. But as time went on, it was clear where the future was. I'm looking for the same sort of infrastructure improvements to make this a no-brainer. Pay attention to the price. When the quality batteries come down in price, not the cheap ones that aren't good for campers, the good ones come down in price, it's gonna become a no-brainer. How about when new campers are sold with WFCOs or converters? 
that can be changed from lithium profile to lead acid simply by flipping a switch instead of replacing the whole device. EVs or new tow vehicles that come with tow packages might have an integrated DC to DC charge controller where you can change the profile from different types of batteries. This is the sort of stuff that's going to make it a no-brainer. Right now, if you need an ultra-large capacity, hundreds of amp hours, you're running a whole house inverter and you're running things that create electric or air conditioning, or if you're a full-timer that puts tons of cycles on the battery, the future is here for you. This is worth the money. Get a good one, install it properly, and you're never going to look back. For everyone else, if you're thrifty with electric and you learn the basics of taking care of an AGM, it's going to be cheaper in the short run and it's going to be cheaper in the long run until the price of these batteries come down. So I hope you guys like this video. Please leave me comments with your feedback or things that you've done with your campers. Check out my other videos and I'll see you next time.